All right, welcome back to my channel, gamers. My name is Soul Betty. You can call me Soul. You can call me Betty. You can call me anything you like as long as it's tasteful. So today I want to put an end to the M and K and controller debate. There is no question controller is better than M and K, and not for the reasons that you think that they're better. So let me start here. In all these debates that I hear movement versus aim assist versus all of this stuff. We should get rid of controllers. Controllers shouldn't be allowed to compete, so on and so forth. That's just entirely not true, okay? Think about this. A controller was built for gaming. A keyboard was built for typing, okay? I want you to say that with me. A controller was built for gaming. A keyboard was built for typing. And in all actuality, that should be the end of the debate right there. It should be if you use mouse and keyboard, that is on you, right? It is what it is. I use M and K for most of the games that I play, but there are some games like Apex that I use a controller still. Just is what it is. For Call of Duty, which you're gonna see in the background, I use mouse and keyboard, right? Um, could I benefit from the aim assist? I definitely could benefit from the aim assist, but uh, I do feel that when I'm sniping with mouse and keyboard, I just have greater control than I would with a controller and my movement feels a little bit better on mouse and key. So let's talk a little bit about the history of controllers. So if you go all the way back to like 1972, the Magnavox Odyssey 100 was a controller type game, right? So kind of your first video game console for the home, um, had an analog controller, kind of looks like just a little bit of a hub. In 1975, the Atari Home Pong console came out. And that kind of looks like a early version of what a controller might look like today. You can kind of see a little Nintendo controller in there. And uh, you could see where you would add some you know, essentially triggers, and that could be your PlayStation controller. Obviously, you'd fast forward 30, 40 years, but just picture it with me, okay? The next one you're gonna see is the Fairchild Channel F. You'll see dual hand controls. Do those look pretty familiar? Almost like something that you would get on, say, maybe a Nintendo Switch or um, a Nintendo Wii type controller, all right? Keep going, the Coleco. Everybody knows that uh, that was one of the funnest systems ever was the Coleco. Now for them, it's a little bigger unit and uh, the, some of the plug-in units looked more like a remote control for a TV, but that's something that was there, right? Then you had the RCA Studio 2 that came out in 1977. Uh, now that does kind of look like a keyboard that's built into type of a controller, more like a telephone dial pad, but when you're looking at this, I mean, yeah, you can see controller over there. Then you had the world of joysticks when the Atari came out. And this is definitely different than controller, but I would say it aligns closer to a controller than it does a keyboard. And then you see the Atari Super System 5200, which again, very similar. Coleco had something similar to this as well that came out, but uh, you'll kind of see the number pad again. And then what's on top is a unit that you can essentially turn side to side, right? So keep going up, a little bit more controller stuff. And then all of a sudden in 1983, the NES comes out, the Nintendo system. And I would say this was the biggest thing, especially of that year. A lot of cool games, Nintendo, pave the way for the future consoles. Now there's another console on this list that I think did very well, but I would say Nintendo, right? Just a natural progression. Most people that you hear about from back in the day probably had an Atari. That'd be like grandparents, parents, that kind of stuff. Then Nintendo would be more parents. You keep going up, you got your Sega, and then the Sega Genesis, right? 1988, the Sega Genesis comes out huge, very popular back in that day, right? So every kid wanted to have one, but look at that controller, three button controller with a D-pad, right? Added, uh, added an extra button to it. Looks very, very, very cool, okay? Super Nintendo comes out. Super Nintendo adds a couple extra buttons to it. Now you got four buttons 
and then you have the D-pad. That doesn't include select and start, but you kind of get the gist here. It's starting to evolve. It's starting to make some progress, right? Um, you look at stuff like the, the Neo Geo, very similar to Nintendo, and then the ultimate, the holy grail of controllers comes out in 1994, and that is gonna be your Sony PlayStation controller. Now, to this day, we've had a lot of iterations of the PlayStation controller. Obviously, every time there's a new console comes out, they redo the controller, and uh, it goes pretty well. Nintendo 64 brings out a controller, but they add kind of a joystick to it. Um, a lot of people seem to like that. Wasn't my favorite controller by any means, because I think it was pretty big, but, Kind of cool, all the same, right? And you had some controllers in there along the ways, but I think the next biggest controller would have been 1997 with the Sony PlayStation DualShock, where they add thumbsticks for the first time onto a controller. This gives you four buttons. This also gives you two fully controllable thumbsticks. And the thumbsticks allow you to use your thumbs to be pretty precise rather than having to use the D-pad. Gives you a full range of motion, and this is the first time that I think in the 90s that controllers really evolve, okay? And you see a few more controllers come out. You see like the Sega Dreamcast, and that did okay. The Nintendo GameCube kind of makes it look a little spaceship-like, you know, all trying to do their iterations. Then you have the Xbox that comes out. It also has somewhat of an you know, a dual shock. They call it the fat Xbox in 2001 and a uh, little bit bigger controller, same amount of buttons and a different layout. And this really becomes the controller war between people, right? You either love the Xbox and how big it is, or you hate it, or you love the uh, dual shock controller, how big it is, or you hate it, right? I've always been a PlayStation person if you haven't figured that one out, but now you've got some viable instruments to be able to play your games, okay? Um, you keep fast forwarding. Like I said, you had the Wii remote that came out. That was in 2006. Looks very similar to the 70s, right? Now you're starting to see this. Obviously, Microsoft Xbox 360 brings their new controller out. Um, looks pretty good. And then you got PlayStation Move. Again, another 70s-like. So a lot of these controllers are just coming back from earlier times. Then you have Microsoft Xbox One, Sony PlayStation DualShock 4, then the Xbox One Elite controller, and then you've got the Nintendo Switch controllers, and then what I think is the ultimate grail that I use today is the Sony PlayStation 5 DualSense that came out in 2020. Now, people will say, well, there's other controllers out there like the Battle Beaver and um, those types of controllers, right? So. All of those are pretty important. And the crazy thing is there's probably a million different keyboards that you could look at and go after and say, hey, those are great input devices as well. But keep in mind, if we look up the history of keyboards, the development of the first modern computer keyboard was occasioned by the invention of typewriters with the first practical modern typewriter patented patented by Christopher Lathan Scholes in 1867, okay? And I just got this off History Computer, so if you wanna take a look at that. Um, so they've been around a long time, but they weren't built for gaming like controllers were. So all you folks out there that are fighting this fight about controllers versus keyboards, this is the one that I never hear about. I never hear about the history of controllers, how important are the controllers are to the game. All I ever hear is that controllers should be banned because of the aim assist. That's fine. If that's what you think, turn aim assist off, whatever the case is, make it fair for everybody. But I will say that con banning controllers is not the right thing to do just from a standpoint that controllers were made for gaming and keyboards weren't. So I'm gonna ask you or leave you with this question, okay? Which input device is not native to gaming? Would that be your mouse and keyboard or would that be your controller? Let me phrase it a different way. Which input device was specifically made for gaming? Mouse and keyboard or controller? That should end your debate.